The Spike Factory was buffed in the most recent update to BTD Battles 2. And here's exactly what was changed. The 003 Long Life Spikes gains a 4 times speed boost at the start of each round for 2.5 seconds it used to be to now 6 seconds and this carries over to the 004 and 005 Perma Spike. In NinjaQ we explain Spike Factory's bottom path has potential but often is not the best option because it must be bought in advance to build up a decent pile. Since the bottom path is all about longer durations, we've increased the duration of the speed boost at the start of each round, allowing slightly beefier spike piles to be built up in the short term. So with that being said, we're going to be showcasing these changes in today's video to see how good the spike battery is now. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Okay, so a little bit of context here. I'm going against Adam DeVore right now, and he's in the Brilliant Rushers clan. Now, I just went against him in my last video, and this was one of the guys that quite literally refused to rush me the entire game, yet he is in a clan named Brilliant Rushers. Like, someone pointed that out in the comments. I'll put it on the screen. That is, the, the irony is insane there. <laughs> so the fact that we're going against him again in today's video is freaking hilarious. But hopefully this time, he will in fact rush us, okay? We are on the map Glade, which is a lot shorter, a lot more difficult. So he might not want to go epic late game. Uh, this time around okay but we're gonna be starting off with the boat as our first popping power tower we are ultimately using the strategy of quincy boat alchemist spike freaking factory this strategy is actually fantastic uh, on this map okay so i'll also set down quincy maybe like right or actually let's go like more over here it's a little strange but it'll help us out against like the ai balloons and stuff uh he's not currently sending us eco and he started off with an ng okay so, it's early in the season, right? So, like, how is this guy in BFB Coliseum? Because if you think about it, like, at the start of the season, what, you lose, like, 25% of your trophies or whatever? So, you're, you're going to get deranked, right? And it's going to actually take some effort to get to the BFB Coliseum. I know BFB ain't crazy, but still, if you're not top 100 in Hall of Masters, for example, you actually get reset back to 75 trophies, which is the BFB Coliseum. So, the fact that this guy's in BFB, you would assume that he's pretty decent at the game. Well, th this guy definitely plays quite weird. At least he's sending balloons now, though, okay? I, I guess it's because he wanted to go for a very early Benjamin, which that makes sense, okay? So, uh, <laughs> since he's using Benjamin, he's probably worried about the life advantage, and he's going to get the life advantage here, uh, because I am not able to fully defend against this. Oh, yeah, I should be sending space pinks. It's round four. Okay, so, yeah, let me get to doing that. And then, after one more income boost, or actually... Nah, we'll continue on sending Space Pinks here. We'll tank the lives. Uh, so, yeah, he did end up leaking, but again, with having Benjamin, he's going to be able to eventually regen his lives, so... Oh, my goodness, man. I swear, if this is a round two of this guy refusing to rush us, we're, we're going to have some problems, okay? <laughs> well, round five is here. We're actually going to continue on Space Sea Queen because with this strategy, we can utilize boat farms. So, I definitely want to go for an early game Merchantman, which... Where should I have the merchantman? Should I have it more towards the back of the map? I feel like I should. Just because if, in case he does send us a rush, and we have a merchantman like all the way at the front of the map, then it's going to cause a massive regrow farm, right? Because that's the only tower all the way up there. And the merchantman is not the best at popping balloons. The merchantman is mainly here, of course, to make us money. Oh, wait. They're struggling with the space whites. Okay, because, yeah, they have a double guns with the top cross path, but that is simply not enough. To handle against constant space whites he did go for a tax shooter oh and a sub too okay so tax sub ng definitely one of the strategies of all time i should be able to go for a merchantman here after just one more income boost so we'll go for that now uh since he's popping the balloons ready to come off the map yeah okay i was gonna say i just wanted to lock in the merchantman make sure that we had that so we get that extra 300 dollars at the start of round seven and i'm gonna continue on space eco in here I think, technically, like, with, like, the Eagle Flow chart, when using both farms, we're supposed to be sending group yellows, but uh, I think we can actually pull off another uh, boat farm before these mid-game rounds here, okay? So, we'll, we'll start to go for that. And, yeah, I'm going to just continue on sending Space Whites here, too. Not Space Blacks or anything. Uh, but after we go for this next Merchantman, we'll start preparing more for our mid-game defenses by going with an Alchemist to eventually Alk buff this can ship here. And also, too, we could go for a Spike Factory tactically. Which, you know, the Spike Factory, it's kind of the main objective with today's video, right? So, I feel like it's pretty fitting for us to actually do that. So, we'll 100% do that. Let's actually go for that. 
right there. Or, ooh, wait. Wait, maybe I don't want it right there. Oh shoot. Now it's a little bit too late, unless I go for a double one. Oh my god. I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to do now, boys, because like, the balloons that he sends, like just normal balloons, they're gonna exit over here, right? But mob class balloons will exit down here. So that was kind of my thought process with that, but now I'm not sure what I should do. Okay. Well, first of all, I feel like I should definitely out buff this, right? So we'll go over an alchemist there. Set you to strong. Let's make sure that it has the crow's nest as well. Round 12 this year. We have 4k on hand. Oh my god. Okay, but well, let's go for the berserker brood nonetheless. Okay, some purples here. We should be good, honestly. I feel like, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I ain't gonna lie, that, that, that was a little scary. That that was a little scary. Let me go for stronger stim then. Hey, at least he sent us a rush. Wait. Oh, he definitely did not mean to do that. Oh, he did not mean to do that. Okay, wait. Do I defend this though? I think I'm actually dead at that. Um, yeah, this guy's what wow, brilliant rushers, yo. Yo, you know what? You know what? I, I definitely should have countered. He had nothing over his <laughs> Yo, yo. At least he rushed me this time. We'll, we'll showcase the loss of the channel. It is absolutely fine. I will catch you on the next one. All right, so we're not going to make the same mistake twice. This time around, I'm going to immediately go for the stronger stim. Now, for a map like this, man, guys, this strategy really isn't necessarily all that good, but we're, we're going to work with what we freaking got, okay? And our opponent, he's got a pretty decent setup. This pretty weak cam detection. Okay, wait. We cannot tower boost this. We cannot tower boost that. Ooh, okay. That's going to sting a little bit. It's going to sting a little bit. But we are, in fact, good. Round 12 is here. Space Rainbows it is, of course. I'll set this Alchemist to strong, by the way. I still... Okay, I didn't have the long range. Which actually increases the pierce of the Grape Shot attack. Okay, so... That, of course, is good that we have that now. Let's go for Crow's Nest, too, so that it can actually pop Camo Balloons. And we'll even cross path this bad boy with the middle path, okay? Because... I don't want to die to a mid-game rush. And also, too, we didn't even get to showcase the Spike Factory. I messed up in the last game, but we're going to go for a good old Spike Factory right here, right now. I'm going to go for the bottom path upgrades, target it to close, and now watch at the start of the round, okay? Just watch this. Watch the Spike Factory just do its thing, okay? See how rapidly it's producing those spikes? Oh, wait. Wait, that's for the... Okay, I'm just going to use level 3 there, by the way. With level 3, are we good? I think we are. Okay, so that was the that was the tier two. This is the tier three. Look, you see the difference? You see how much longer it deployed all those spikes for? So that's what they ended up changing, of course, with this update. By the way, I have not been ecoing, so I decided to go for around 15 favor traits. Definitely worth. So because it's the tier three upgrade, we can't necessarily go for like a 302 spike balls and have the spike balls just deploy for six seconds straight rapidly at the start of each new round. We have to go for the long life spikes. So it gives more reason to use these bottom path upgrades because honestly, outside of just like having infinite money, people don't really use these bottom path upgrades, especially during the mid game rounds, okay? You only go for like the perma spike. Again, if you have a lot of money, you can just easily go for it, okay? So thankfully, he didn't really send us a rush after that region rainbow rush. I mean, we had probably not at the time that dense of a pile, but nonetheless, we still had a spike factory on the map. So in case anything does get past this boat and just all these defenses up here, we got a pretty good pile at this point. Although I still have yet to cross path this thing uh, just because I'd rather spend my money on constantly equaling here, okay? Uh, I do want to go for eventually more boat farms, but obviously there is limited water on this map. So we'll never like not eco. We're going to constantly eco for the rest of the game. Uh, and I could probably honestly switch to pink eco at this point, okay? So let's do that. They did go with a sniper. Okay, so fair play, well done with that. Their strategy doesn't make very much sense, but I I'm just looking to go decently late with this one, okay? And I want to see specifically the perma spike in action, okay? Very, very excited to see that. So we'll start to cross path this thing with the top path so we get that bigger stacks and also the white hot spikes so that this spike pile now has the ability to pop lead balloons. Although we could technically alk buff it, which honestly, would that be... Not that probably wouldn't be that bad of an idea, right? I kind of want to do that, but before we go over an Alchemist, I think going for the Deadly Spikes upgrade is going to be a bit better for us, okay? This is obviously, like, delaying, like, boat farms and stuff like that, too, but this is experimental, okay? We're trying to see this thing in action. 
Let's actually uh, just go for that right now, by the way. Surely we're fine against this mob here. Oh my, dude, this thing's OP. You guys saw it here first. Shredded that mob down for us, the insides and everything. Round 20 is here. Another mob we're absolutely fine against. And I will go for an alchemist here once again. I mean, do we want a stronger sim on it? I kind of do. <laughs> I do. I mean, this thing, th this is why we're here. Okay, this is literally why we're here. So, I, I will go for a stronger stick. Screw Boat Army. I mean, I kind of want this guy to send us a rush, but I just really don't think he's going to. I hope I'm wrong, though. He could send us a ZLMG here on round 22. It's definitely possible. So, if he does, hopefully we're going to be ready with this thing, okay? Okay, he did go for an Elite Cypher. We'll give him that. He went for that. I think we can go for five boats in here, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so, we'll go for our last boat right here. Beautiful. Got three merchant men on top of favorite trades now. So, I think it'd be better for us. I think since we're not spamming boat farms, I think it's better to, for us to go for favorite trades first and then after the trade empire. The trade empire is good when you have a ton of merchant men, right? So, yeah, we'll go for these first then. But yeah, no signs of aggression, unfortunately. You never know, though. I mean, I think maybe with the strategy, though, a lot of the times what people do is that they get a perma spike. And then they build that up, right? They, they let it produce the perma spike spikes for a few rounds, and then they actually sell it to have more money to rush immediately on round 30. So we could do that. Should we do it? I think we should. I don't think I've ever actually have done that with this strategy. So I kind of want to do that. So we should probably let the perma spike deploy perma spikes themselves for at least three rounds, if not longer, right? So ideally... We want to go for it at this point ASAP because, I mean, Trade Empire, like, it's nice, right? But the fact that we had the favored trades is pretty decent enough, you know? So, due to the circumstances, yeah, I think after we get the favored trades money and everything, we'll go for the Perma Spike, and then that will give it what? I mean, if we can go for it next round, round 26, and then 27, 28, 29, 30. So, like, that's quite a bit. And those Perma Spike Spikes at the start of each new round will rapidly be deploying for about six seconds straight, okay? So, um, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go for it right now, unfortunately. Round 26 is here. Can this even defend against DDTs? I mean, it's a stronger stemmed Deadly Spikes. Okay, hence the name Deadly Spikes. Surely, it would be able to defend against DDTs, right? I don't know actually for sure, but there we go. Round 26, the perfect spike. I, I feel like that's pretty good. And we should also probably stop ecoing here very, very soon, since we do plan on rushing our opponent, you know what I mean? So. We'll stop Equine at four. Oh my god. Okay. 4501 Eco it is. Mind you, he's not even sending us anything at the moment. He's just going for supply drops. Okay. So, one way or another, he is in fact getting money. Uh, but if we do immediately rush him too, remember, with having the Perma Spike pile, or just the Perma Spike in general, we're going to have a dense pile of Perma Spike spikes on the map. That is why we are able to sell this and then just rush him. And then we'll have a decent Perma Spike pile. Uh, in case he tries to counter us, you know what I mean? So, that, that's kind of the thought process here. Round 28, though, is in fact here. Maybe I should go with a Spike Factory now. It's going to be kind of weird because this Alchemist might buff this Spike Factory, which is kind of not what I want, but there's really no other way around it. I just want to have this in case he, like, tries to all out us with DDTs, like, all of a sudden, you know what I mean? We can go for a Carver Spikes. Actually, we have enough money for that. Okay, I kind of forgot to do this, by the way. Trade Empire, though. Got that there. Okay, so that's going to be able to make us a little bit of money. And we want to make sure that we boat pool, actually, immediately the BFB on round 30. Okay, because obviously we get all of our money from all these boat farms at the start of every new round. So if round 30 starts, we'll get the money. And then we boat pool the BFB. AI is completely cleared, which will trigger the next round to start. And then we'll get all the money once again from these boat farms. Oh my god, the plays that we are about to do are actually too hundred freaking IQ and I don't think he's gonna be ready for it. I, I truly don't. I mean <laughs> this is probably not surprising. I think you guys would have to agree with me. His current setup is not very good. I think what we should do is send one fortified BAD and then hyper dense ZOMGs all behind it. Okay. How about that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's boat pull this. Beautiful. Okay. And then we'll sell you. And we'll sell all of you. And look at this rush, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's see. Let's see if this can defend. Oh, 
Perma Spike OP! Oh, we gotta watch out, though. I cannot lie to y'all. We really have gotta watch out here. Oh, it's the Fortified BAD. Bro, why the heck would you waste your money to? My Fortified BAD is way further. But, dude, yep. Yeah, yo, the ZMGs are getting stunned quite a bit. He did go for a Master Bomb, and that's why. Mm, okay, but we made him sell off every single one of his farms. I'm gonna Spike Storm that, just to be safe. We're gonna... <laughs> Perma Spike! Yo! Yo, no way, boys. I think he's dead. He can sell the Master Bomber last second. No, he's going to cry. Yo, the Perma Spike actually being useful in Battles 2. What? You, like, never see that. Truly, in, in Battles 2, Perma Spike is a little underwhelming. But, boys, it actually worked. I mean, the 45 BED just completely ate the pile there. So, he could have sent us one last set of DDTs. I, I was ready for it, though, but... Oh my god, I feel like that worked out perfectly. Maybe a little bit overkill on the ZOMG sense, but nonetheless, we still got the win. We got to showcase the Spike Factory changes as well. Overall, GG's. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out this video where they buffed the Inferno Ring again in Battles 2. Bye!